Hey, this is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog on green building and building science. I'm here on a uh, remodel project. We're in a suburb of Austin called Westlake. It's not a very old home that we're doing some remodeling on. The house is only about 10 years old. But uh, we ran into some insulation issues on this old house, or this fairly new house, I should say, as we've been doing some demo work. And I thought I'd, I'd do a quick video post on why I don't like traditional bat fiberglass insulation. Um, as you can see, this is where a, a corner fireplace used to be that we're moving around. And this has an unfaced uh, fiberglass in here. One problem that we immediately noticed, if you, if you pan up to the top here, a bunch of bays up there just never got insulated. So that was a huge uh, heat gain on the house. But then the other, my big problem with, uh, with fiberglass insulation, in the back insulation that is, is that it, you really need a near perfect insulation to get anywhere near the R value. And look at this. I mean, they just stuffed this in there willy-nilly. We just ripped the sheetrock off and you can see now what it looks like. Just a really bad install of this, of this insulation in here. This one wasn't too bad, but look at this around, around trying to fit around this wiring and this. I mean, it's just a terrible install. Look at that huge void right there. And then when you've got beams or, or odd shaped cavities, things just do not uh, go very well. Look at this. Just stuffed in there. Did not get very good insulation value at all. Same thing with wire penetrations. Where this wire was coming through, there's a huge void back in this corner here. Just really not a good install. The other thing I do want to mention too on this, in this uh, hot, humid climate of Austin, Texas, we always want to have our vapor barriers on the outside of our houses, not on the inside because there's condensation issues. And let's walk over to one other spot in the house where I'll show you where uh, we had some issues as well. They used a, uh, a vapor barrier of uh, polyethylene, which you see a lot uh, 10 years ago. And boy, this, was, this is a mistake. You do not want to put a vapor barrier on the inside of your house. Didn't see a lot of issues with mold in this particular area, but we did actually find some mold issues on this corner. It looks to be a leak from a valley uh, in this house. And once we pull this, this plastic off, you can see it. This plastic was not helping things at all. Again, another terrible uh, install of this insulation. No, there's really basically no insulation behind this, this 2x6 here. I'm not even sure what that 2x6 is doing, but because of this leak, well, you can see this, this uh, stud in here. This OSB sheathing is like totally rotted. Look at that. That's your OSB sheathing after being soaked for who knows how long. So we, we got to get this leak figured out. But really, the, the, main, the main purpose of my post today was to say avoid fiberglass bat insulation if you can. We like the blown-in uh, fiberglass, the blown-in bat system, where you, you basically take the uh, scale of the installer away and it's really hard to make a mistake. We also like spray foam for that reason too because you don't have to necessarily be a super skilled spray foam installer to get the full insulation value. But boy, with, with fiberglass bats, you need a near perfect install and this was far from it. So thanks for joining me today. Have a good afternoon.